Hello friends, welcome to another vlog. This is the week, the week I'm gonna do the bonnet. Mm, mm, mm. I say that every week. It's gonna happen. Wait, this is bad, this is good, right? 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 This is like the Winston Churchill error. <laughs> Sorry for all my British friends, I did not mean to do that to you. American mistake, please forgive. Um, yeah, so I have this bonnet. We've been talking about it forever. It will someday look like this. <laughs> Today is not that day, but maybe someday soon. For those who are new here, sorry, you may have not caught up on the fact that I've been trying to make this bonnet since the dawn of man and it hasn't been working out. Um, I have this top which I cut and then lined in organdy. Well, first I like lined it in like uh, batting kind of material, like whatever you pad out hats with. Um, and that was too thick. And then I did it with the organdy. It's still too thick. So I figured out I just need to cut a bigger circle. I mean, that seems like the obvious answer. And I've just gotten derailed like every week until that's happened. I am not gonna start this ball gown bodice until this dang hat is done. So that is what's happening right now. <laughs> I'm gonna cut the circle bigger. I gotta iron this circle out. So I need to like break all these threads and iron this circle out so I can figure out how big this one is. I mean, I guess I have the pattern. Maybe I should use the pattern um, <laughs> to establish that. And then I'm going to cut a circle that's like a couple inches bigger. The problem is that my hair, which is long, um, does not actually fit up in there. Like if I put it in a, a bun, um, there's no, there's, it like pokes out the back, so it's not good. And I have to be able to put my hair up because apparently it is not done in Regency society to not have your hair up, so we gotta put our hair up. <coughs> anyway, so gonna get some measurements, gonna add a couple inches, make the sucker bigger, pop it on this hat, see if it works out. If it does, woo woo. Then I can trim the hat and we'll call it good and we will have a emergency bonnet. Um, I would really like this done so I can just stop thinking about it. So that's what's what right now. <laughs> I also have a pile of napkins um, that I have had sitting on my dryer since the 14th of December. Ah, 15th of December because I had the party on the 14th of December <laughs> and I washed the napkins the next day. Um, and they need to be ironed and put away too. So I have a feeling that today is ironing Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? It is Tuesday. So I've had a fun day reading you guys' comments to my last vlog. I asked you guys how you were doing in your quarantine life. Hashtag quarantine life. Social distancing life, whatever we're calling it these days. Uh, and, and most of you are doing pretty well and some of you are not doing so well. So those of you who are not doing so well, I send you huge hugs. I am so sorry about all this. Especially for those of you who live alone, how horrible. And those of you who are in the medical care profession and or work at grocery stores. Whew. Grocery store people. I, I bless you grocery store people for staying and working and doing your jobs while the rest of us are at home. I mean, you know, largely people are working at home too, but I feel like that's like the front line. <laughs> like, People are mean at the grocery store right now, which is just ridiculous. Like, everybody be nice to your grocery store clerks. They deserve a big ol' hug, but they can't have one. So give them a verbal hug by being nice to them. Uh, anyway, uh, continuing on that trend, leave me down below what you guys are doing in your hashtag quarantine life uh, this week. What are you working on? Are you, do you have projects you're working on? Are you just enjoying the quietness of being alone at home. Someone reported that they are going crazy because their husband is being a jerk. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. Um, yeah. She's like, stop me before I go crazy and there's a homicide. And I'm like, mm. no one will know about the homicide at least until COVID's over. So I'm like, no, I'm not advocating homicide. Although the joke around my house is that I'm homicide, not suicide. So don't make me crazy. <laughs> My husband heard that the first time and was like, whoa, okay. 
I'm like, fair warning. Okay, so I'm gonna go iron this and I'm probably gonna iron a couple napkins because I think what's gonna happen is I'm gonna do two or three napkins at a time until they're all done <laughs> because that's how I roll. All right, so we're gonna iron this flat and just like, I mean, I could take a measurement without it, but it would be easier if it was, if it was iron flat. These cool toys that I got in Seattle are also a compass. So I could actually draw a good circle um, because if I use the pattern, then I I did what I always do and I cut the pattern. <laughs> so I will have to write on the pattern, add two inches or whatever to it. So I emerge at least partially victorious. I have a larger crown. It's significantly larger. <laughs> it's like an inch and a half bigger on each side. So three inches larger total. Yeah. So now I'm going to run gathering threads all the way around it. I do them in quarters. Like I'll run it from here basically to here. And then there to there and there to there because otherwise they break they just break on me and i don't know what the deal is but they do so um, i'm gonna iron this first because there's a crease right here that's sort of annoying to me so i'm gonna make sure that that crease gets ironed out because after this there'll be no more ironing all right this guy's pinned on but it's much bigger and my hair does fit in there it still kind of pops out a little bit but it is in a big bun right now so it's not really a period hairstyle anyway it is being sewn peeps it is being sewn. It might actually get sewn on today. I tried it on when it was halfway sewn and it looked, it, it felt much better. So there's room for my top knot. You still may be able to see my top knot or whatever I have going on in there. I got to figure out a better way to do my hair. Yeah, there's room for my hair now. So I'm super pumped that this is working out. And I'm like, oh, 60% around. So I'll finish this up uh, today for sure. Um, She's done. I'm sure there is still some bunnage going on here in the back but it's because i have like oh just a, a rock bun back there instead of like a done hair so but i'm really pumped because it fits now and i'm super excited i just need to put some ties on it and do some decoration up here and we shall be all done with this bonnet oh my god i'm so excited okay so i did this thing and i did this thing woo woo we're moving. I'm so excited. Good morning. And by morning, I mean afternoon. <laughs> I almost just squirreled. Like I almost ran off and started something else. <laughs> but then I was like, all I have to do is trim this thing. I have to make ties and I have to make a little squishy trim thing for the top. So like, stay on target, Noel. Stay on target. <laughs> so I'm going to try and do as much of that as I can today and get this dang bonnet done. I tried it on again and it does in fact fit and looks good so i'm excited this is this is the pattern um it comes with one million caps like you can make this in a million different ways for all these different kinds of little caps i don't have the thing back there i really like this jockey cap too it's super cute i really like this guy i really like this one she also has these all as separate hats because the instructions are kind of together so you have to do a lot of read this part okay I can skip all this okay read this part okay skip all this when you make it so she also made versions of all these hat patterns that are individual which I'm super pumped on uh because it's a lot easier to read anyway this is the one that I'm making this is Lori um wearing this hat and I liked this little scrunchy thing that was on it so I'm gonna try to recreate that and there are instructions in here you can get lens patterns on outofaportrait.com where she has all of her hat patterns. I will leave a link down for that down below. Literally, I'm almost done. Like, can I taste it? Yes, I can. Did I do the things I was supposed to do? No, I did not. I ironed like 20 napkins. I cleaned off my craft table. I cleaned up my room a little bit. I still need to vacuum. I, I did everything but the thing I was supposed to do. <laughs> Compassionate goals, people. Compassionate goals. Okay, so for reals now, for reals gonna cut this thing okay so I have a bias strip cut out it is very long because it has now been sewn together um, and she says go ahead and press this in half and then sew one inch from this line and then press it down and then back so it should make you know three mountains basically and then run a stitch along the edge for gathering and then you just gather the whole thing up and plop it on your hat. So that is what I'm going to do. She said something on there about by hand, but I'm going to try by machine. <laughs> We're going to see how that goes. I was wrong. 
Lynn was right. I'm now running it by hand. Fun times. I'm also going to watch Atlantis with my Disney pals in exactly one minute. <laughs> so we are doing Disney viewing on Friday nights. Okay, during Atlantis, I managed to make this crazy thing that goes along the hat brim here. Um, I pulled the hat brim up so I could stick this thing in there and then I need to sew it in. But first I need to make tape or not, what are they called? Straps? No. What do you call them, Lynn? Let's find out what Lynn calls them. She calls them ties. I have to make ties. Although her pattern looks thinner than the way that my my hat was and by my hat I mean Lynn's hat this here hat so it also looks like they're folded in half when they're sewn on so yeah you can see better here see so, yeah, how it looks like they're folded in half and then there's like a little gap right there where they're opening because they're really wide at the bottom oh maybe she just did it that way and they don't need to be that wide anyway I'm gonna do like three or four inch ties and Slap them on there. Bias strip making is so wasteful. Like, now I have this big old triangle of fabric. So I think I might make a reticule. This is um, a pattern that Rebecca gave me from Lady Rebecca Fashions. I will link her channel down below. She made this. Actually, I'll link the video where she made this down, down below. She made this in a video. So I like this pattern. It's pretty. So I think I'm going to save this fabric and I'll have just enough to cut a reticule out. So that's awesome. And that hat doesn't really match anything that I'm wearing other than it just kind of goes with the red thing that I wear, the Spencer. So it'll be fine to have a bag that matches my hat, but not the rest of it. Okay, ties are done. Based on this picture, I am going to fold them in half and then attach them because that's the way it looks like this was. And I know that I wore this and I don't remember what was going on there but both of those pictures indicate that that's what was happening so that's what i'm gonna do here so i'm gonna go ahead and stitch these on ties are on i'm excited about that now i'm gonna put this fluffy thing on i did forget that i have to put a lining in so i'm not actually that close to done but i probably will finish this tomorrow because it's getting kind of late but um i might pin that guy on and see see what we can do about it but it do okay it needs um a lining but it has ties and they are white on the inside and yellow on the outside and we have a fluffy frilly thing and this hat needs to be a little adjusted but it is cute and I like it and I'll put the lining in maybe tomorrow. For those of you who are interested, I am reading Medieval Myths and Mysteries which is amazing. I really like it. The chapter situation is here so that you know what they cover. So good so far. It's not the myths and mysteries themselves. It's like an academic perspective on like who was King Arthur and why, where, how early did these legends start and was there really a guy called King Arthur and you know blah blah blah. So it's fascinating though. I love it. Okay. So we can do this, but then we also have to do this. <laughs> so I will go ahead and get that done now. I'm going to cut it out. Okay, so I have this circle and I have and it's linen and I have some linen thread which is now waxed and ironed so my room smells like bees and honey and it's fabulous and I love it. And I'm going to run a running stitch around this so that I can gather it up and put it in as my lining. But I thought I would chat with you while I did that. Wanted to check in and see how everyone's doing. How is everyone's self-isolation going? Mine is going fairly well. I've had a bit of bad news this week. If you're a person who doesn't like hearing bad news, <laughs> skip forward like 30 seconds. <clears throat> so two, two of my friend's parents have died in the last like literally two days uh, one yesterday and one today and one of them was from COVID and one of them was not so I'm having a weird time with that I they're not my parents obviously but I do feel really bad for my friends and 
I feel um, sort of stressed that I can't go help them. Like I want to go hug them and hold them and howl with them and do all the things that you do when that that thing happens that will happen to all of us eventually. So, um, yeah. It's been a weird couple of days. So I've been diving into this hat to try and like sort of block that out a little bit, which is sort of working. I am listening to an audiobook called uh, The Great Courses, Medieval Myths and Mysteries, which I think I talked about yesterday, and it is so good so far. <clears throat> we are on to the Robin Hood legend. We have done King Arthur and the Knights Templar so far. Really enjoyed those two lectures. I guess they're lectures, so I'm into that. So other than that horrible piece of news, uh, my self-isolation has gone fairly well so far. I am blessed to be in a rather large house and have a husband who I think is super awesome and seven cats which are basically like having a running television program on all the time because cats are silly <laughs> and ridiculous and they get in fights and they're in a clique all the time and yada yada. I'm gonna put my hair up a little bit so I can get it on my face. So I am very fortunate to have that going on. Um, sorry, my husband is like, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but my husband is having a conversation with his mom. After that unfortunate news, I was like, call your mother. <laughs> Make sure everything's okay. Um, a lot of you have been asking about his mom, so I guess I should tell you about that too. Um, his mom is doing just fine. She had surgery and he unfortunately didn't go for the surgery, but um, she is doing just fine after that. She stayed with a friend of hers from church at that person's house for two weeks until, you know, they made sure she was all good and could like function on her own. She could function on her own like literally that day, I think. Like, it wasn't totally necessary, but it's good that she had company and stuff. So she's back at her house now, but she does live alone. And I guess when you have a stroke, they don't let you drive. You have to like talk to your doctor and um, get permission to drive again so she's waiting for that to happen otherwise she has to like basically have people take her everywhere or take a taxi which in the middle of Maine is kind of they exist but they're pretty rare we have been cooking I I am one of those people that got a sourdough starter um my friend Hannah who watches this channel um sent me she she dried dried yes out some of her her sourdough starter and then she wrote I think I showed it that she wrote this is not anthrax all over it um, so it's actually currently out of the fridge right now and I'm gonna make some crumpets. We are attempting to make crumpets for the third time. I, we, Hannah and I have been diagnosing this problem. I feel like we are using too much oil and probably not the right kind of oil. So we're gonna try a different method today of making crumpets because they keep coming out too wet, moist. Like they're, the outside is cooking before the inside has time to cook basically. So. Yeah. Do I have other news? No, but more stuff has gotten added to my board of like things I want to do right now because I'm squirreling. Remember compassionate deadlines. <laughs> Allow yourself to squirrel as long as you are being productive, right? Um, so what have I added? I have a vest from Black Snail Patterns that I would really, really like to try doing. I would love a vest. I feel super 80s in my need for a vest right now. <laughs> Although, 1880s. <laughs> I have the American Duchess pattern for that cape that everybody's making and I would like to make that cape. It seems ridiculous for me to make a cape because I live in California and what am I going to do with a cape? <laughs> Especially since it's starting to get warmer, like it's 69 or 70 degrees today. Uh oh. Uh oh. We have a knot. Let's see if I can get this out. Let me see if I... Okay. Yes. Yes. Come through. Come through linen thread. Yes, we're all good. So that AD Cape Cold thing is a thing. And I need to make the cobbies that go under this table. I still need to do that. I don't know if that's like a vloggable item. <laughs> like, here's me making cubbies. Um, I, you too could follow along with instructions that are given to you by Target Furniture. <laughs> um, so uh, I will probably take some time and make those cubbies very soon though, because I would like a little bit more organization in this room that I have and just a touch more storage. I am having a problem with hat storage. 
because I don't have any. <laughs> I have, you guys can't really see, but let me tilt you up. There, oh, that's a wobbly angle. There's some hat boxes up there. Don't try to film like I do, kids. It's really bad. <laughs> and then I have hats in that corner. And I have a hat dangling off the edge up there, but this is not a good hat storage solution. I have some hats in boxes in the garage, and I feel like that's where they're going to start collecting. So I have some storage issues. I also have too many books now. I need to get rid of some of the things that are not books on my bookshelf so I can put actual books on my bookshelf. Just I feel very claustrophobic in here sometimes <clears throat> with the amount of things that are in the cabinet slash drawers and whatever so I'd like to to get a little more organization around that. So that is a thing that is going to happen pretty soon here. Anyway so Chris and I have been cooking a lot which is something that we just don't do on the regular. <laughs> We are excellent picker-uppers of food, so yeah. We have tried a whole bunch of new stuff, um, including the sourdough starter, and we are going to try more stuff this week. I think we got some beef ribs, which I've never tried to cook, but I have an Instant Pot, so beef ribs it is. My friends tell me that beef ribs out of the Instant Pot are bomb.com, and I am ready to do that. And they just say what, whatever liquid they tell you to put in there, don't do that, put a beer in instead. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can do that. Preferably like a lager. So I have a narwhal lager that is going to go into some beef ribs shortly, <clears throat> which should be exciting. I do feel like in general, I am becoming extremely boring. Oh no. Oh, the knot on this is like not knotty enough. It's naughty by nature. I'm here all week, kids. Like, literally until lockdown's over. <laughs> okay, I feel like I got that knot problem fixed. Chris is now talking to his mother about the fact that her Wi-Fi router doesn't seem to work anymore, and we can't figure out why. And she's in Maine, and she wants diagnostic help from California. I'm sure you guys can all sympathize with this. And we're like, we're in California, and he's trying to figure out, like, talk her through looking up answers to questions and stuff while, and she has a machine that's old and, you know, you know how the whole story is going to go here, right? <laughs> so I think what's going to happen is we are going to order a new router and we're going to set it up here and then we're just going to send it to her and tell her how to log into it. So <laughs> rather than try and figure out why the router she has isn't working, because I don't know if that's going to be a successful plan of attack from literally as far away in the continental US as you can be from each other. <laughs> I mean, I guess we could be in San Diego and she could be in the northeast corner of Maine, which she is not. She's in the middle of Maine. So <laughs> that's what's happening there in case you wanted to know all of our personal business. <clears throat> anyway, I feel like I think I was starting to say uh, during this time I've become almost extremely boring because I keep talking to my friends and after the first week or so you know you talk about the, the self-isolation and all the news and blah 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 for a little bit <clears throat> but then after the first week they're like so what's going on I'm like nothing I'm, I made a hat I made a hat it's pretty <laughs> that's all that's going on <laughs> there's nothing happening here I feel like so, usually I have so much to talk about and so many things are going on and I'm talking to so many people about so much stuff and like, that's not happening right now. I'm, I'm still talking to so many people, but I'm talking to them largely about either being in isolation and how they're doing or like, what is your best recipe for, <laughs> for beef ribs? Um, because that is what we have devolved into. And in a way, it's kind of better. Okay, come on up, come back up. I picked it up. Okay, great. <laughs> this is literally me with every project, guys. <laughs> I don't know why you're watching my channel. You're watching my channel because I talk to you. <laughs> Not because I show you how to sew anything. Anyway, I feel I feel like I've become super boring, but I kind of I kind of like it. Like I feel even though I have less to talk about, I feel more intensely gratified about that which I'm doing. So, yay, silver lining on this one. I feel, I don't know, do you guys feel like that? 
I feel like when I when I achieve a new level up on say my cooking skills or whatever I really should be playing Breath of the Wild and I'm not. We started Farscape again. Did you guys watch Farscape? Um, for those of you who don't know what Farscape is, it is a program that was on in I think the 90s uh, and it, it's about an astronaut who is doing a test for one of his theories and he accidentally opens a wormhole and ends up on a ship that is alive, like the whole sh the, the whole ship is alive, but with this random crew of people who has just, the ship is actually like a prison transport, and they have just overtaken the crew and taken over the ship. So th these are his friends now, but they're all kind of like wrongfully yeah. imprisoned or whatever, so they really, they're all really good guys. So it's about their adventures through space. It's like Star Trek, but less serious I guess it's more it's not it's not silly by any so it's kind of silly um there are Jim Henson puppets in it <laughs> the makeup on that show is amazing the makeup that is done on the characters is just I mean it holds up even now the special effects are garbage <laughs> I was watching it yesterday and we just restarted it I think it was like episode <clears throat> six or seven and he's holding these two panels that are supposed to be like electrified or something but they look like the forced ghosts from like 1978 <laughs> Star Wars <laughs> and I'm like okay you guys really haven't improved very much have you um but it's really good it stars Ben Browder if you guys know who he is and Claudia Black and um I don't know I, we really liked it and I haven't seen it in like 15 years so we we started I I just randomly said I wonder what you know how if Farscape holds up and so we started watching it it's not like we don't have a million other things to watch that we haven't seen before but I feel like a lot of people are watching like comfort shows things they know they like so that's what we're doing so that's what I'm watching that's what I'm listening to you guys know what I'm doing I'm sitting here still putting this running stitch in remember when I told you I'm slow anyway I would love to know what you guys are working on and what you're listening to do you guys have any book recommendations for audiobooks my friend Hannah told me about a podcast that is called let me find it for you okay so it's called Phoebe Reads a Mystery, and she's currently reading The Mysteries of Ferret Styles, which is the Agatha Christie's first published novel, actually. Um, her and I are having an Agatha Christie debate because I don't love Agatha Christie. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I don't love it. I'm trying to love it. I'm trying really hard to love it. So those of you who want to yell at me about that, feel free to yell at me below. below. Um, and then, so she's done that entire book, and now she's reading The Hound of the Baskervilles. I think, I think she said that every day she's putting out a new chapter. So there's a whole bunch in there and you can get it in your podcast app or whatever app you listen to podcasts on. I guess they're all podcast apps. <laughs> she's, she's trying to help me like Agatha Christie. I did not like Murder on the Orient Express, that movie, but I had never read the book either. So, and she said that was a, not a great adaptation of that, which is unfortunate because Kenneth Branagh is usually pretty good at stuff so uh, I've read a few of Agatha Christie novels and I think I've discussed them here where I'm like I don't get it or um, that seemed like a cop-out or me I don't I, I can't really put my finger on why I don't love them I just I think they're really hyped and I don't I don't find them as hype as everyone else does uh, Sherlock Holmes mysteries I'm into though uh, those are totally different though because Agatha Christie gives you like the clues along the way so you could theoretically figure it out yourself if you wanted to um, whereas Sherlock Holmes is not really that way like he happens to know the way that the ash of such and such a cigarette looks on the ground after five hours and whatever you know stuff that you wouldn't as the reader never have privy information to or almost be told that like they don't point those things out in the book for you so there are different kinds of mysteries I guess. Anyway back to the normal set of questions. What are you reading and what are you listening to? Are you listening to, is there any new good music out that people would like to recommend to each other? And what are your projects that you're working on? Are you working on projects or are you just chilling and watching TV? I am down for the chilling and watching TV too. These vlogs are kind of disjointed because frequently I have an intention of working on some stuff and then <laughs> I go 
you know what, I'm gonna sit in bed all day and watch TV instead. <laughs> and then the next day I come back and I'm like, okay, we're gonna try again. So yeah, everybody give me a status update if you have a moment and let me know how you're doing and how are you doing like mentally with all this because it's a lot. I feel like we're settling in as a, as a group. We're settling into this and the government keeps talking about when we can stop doing this. Um, but I don't know. A lot of people keep talking to me about wanting to be out of it in another couple weeks and I'm like, I don't, I don't know if it works that way. <laughs> yeah, we've, we're flattening the curve, but it doesn't stay flat in, if you go back out. Like, it, it unflattens <laughs> the second everybody goes out again. So maybe it's not a good idea to go out. It's kind of like, um, I have this friend without disclosing who they are, but <laughs> that she is on an antidepressants and very frequently she'll go on her antidepressants and they will work. And then she will say, oh, I feel better. I don't need them anymore and go off of them. And I'm like, that is not how this works. You have to stay on them. <laughs> they are the thing that's making you feel better. If you go off of them, it won't feel ah. So that's how I feel about this. <laughs> um, and, and with people who are like, oh, it'll just be another week or two and we've already flattened, and we've already flattened the curve so everything's fine. I'm like, that's not how this works. It doesn't just go away. So, ugh to that. Anyway, <clears throat> I am trying very hard not to talk about this stuff too much in this vlog if I can help it, so I'm sorry for my digression. So a little tip, my friends and I have been playing Jackbox games, and if you just go to jackboxgames.com, you can see what they are. They're like very short, fun games um, that you can play, and you can play over the internet with each other. It's helpful if you have a Zoom, but Zoom is free for 40 minutes, so you could play in 40 minute chunks and then just start a new Zoom if you wanted to. So one person would be like, uh, would host the game and their their computer screen would definitely give the main Jackbox scenarios that are happening. So uh, there's one called Drawful where they ask you, and so everybody would be playing on their phone and they would ask you to draw something, but nobody else knows what that is. And then everybody has to like guess what it is. It's like Pictionary. Um, there's You Don't Know Jack on there, which is like a trivia quiz game. There's like this murder this murder one where like basically it's a trivia game and if you get questions wrong you die. <laughs> like they, they murder you in it like graphically. <laughs> it's very funny. Um, there's another one that's where you work as a team to make t-shirts. So first they ask you to just draw whatever you want and they'll give you prompts if you want. So you just draw random pictures and then... And then the second phase is everybody writes like a tagline and then they start combining the taglines and the t-shirts and they get like super silly and ridiculous um, and, and very, very funny. So those games are very fun and Jackbox games, I think only one person has to own them and they're constantly on sale and they come in giant party packs. So they're not very expensive to play. So if you want to get together with a bunch of friends and play some games, that's a great way to do it. Um, over the internet and you can also zoom or whatever your method is of sharing your screen um, and that is great because you can also see each other too that's the part I like the best is I can actually see my friends smiling faces and I miss them terribly but like I said I'm doing okay I feel like uh, I'm sad that I'm not doing all the traveling that I had planned for this year and it's kind of like that part's a big waste of a year off, which is what I would do with a year off anytime I had one and all that. But I also think I'm getting a different perspective on things. So I'm trying to constantly look for silver linings in this and um, see if I can find the good in this situation. All right, we have a running stitch through this whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and set this into my cap. I never really thought about the fact that this lining is actually going to take up space and therefore make this hat smaller. We're going to see. Okay, I started putting this lining in and I was like, wow, this is a really thick here. Especially with this linen. Which is pretty light, but it's not, you know, the lightest. So, I tried it on. With just even this much pinned, it's too much. Like, I can't do it all the way around. It will make this hat not fit. So... I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. I could just totally not worry about lining. I could 
like bind this edge I guess or something um, so that it's not noticeable but I cannot stick this lining in here so I'm gonna send a question to Lynn and ask her what she thinks and then find out what the answer is here and other than that I'm calling this problem not an issue because I don't need to line it in order to wear it so this is annoying though so annoying now I'm cranky <laughs> I don't think I can line that and I'm bummed about it I mean it's fine it can get worn without a lining it's not like the end of the world or whatever but like it would have been nice to have it be nice but I would have to like literally open up the hole more in order to line it I think even if I use silk lining it would still be too like it would take out too much room because so I tried it on again and it fits like so Note to self, <laughs> make a bigger hole next time. Uh, this makes me sad. I sent a question off to Lynn, so we'll see what she says to the answer. Anyway, I think what I'm gonna do is like, and move on from that. <laughs> and I'm just gonna take it off the board and have it be done and let it mentally not be there. But I do have to like figure out what I wanna do next. And I am not sure I am kind of itching to like get those cubbies up here and get them started but it also means that I have to take some of the stuff that's in here downstairs to the garage where there's no room for so like I have to go in there and clean some stuff out to make room so like <sighs> this becomes a whole project so um, I think what I'm gonna do right now is just clean up this room as much as possible it definitely needs a good vacuum and all that kind of jazz um, so I'm gonna handle that first and then I'm gonna go take a peek downstairs and see how bad the situation is like can it can I Do anything down there that will make this Situation Work out easily like is there a bin of stuff that I just like I'm like I don't need any of this and I can get rid of it So we shall see what happens with that Okay, I went downstairs and I checked stuff out and I have to go through a bunch of bins that's like the gist of it and I think that's probably a good idea for me to do anyway I go through my costuming bins about once a year and it's about time so I will probably do that job tomorrow go through and just get rid of a bunch of stuff that I don't need I have so much weird stuff from like especially when I started costuming stuff that I will never ever wear again um, so like there's no point in hanging on to it just because I'm like weirdly sentimental about it. I don't love Marie Kondo, but I do believe in like purging my stuff. So <laughs> I purge a lot actually. So um, I think I'm gonna do that so that I can move some of this wool downstairs because I don't need wool in my craft room at all times. Um, I also could theoretically put some of this in the guest room for a while because we're not gonna have any guests for a while. Um, <laughs> but I think that is a slippery slope to a bad idea so I'm not gonna do it I'm just gonna like do the job I had the entire exit of this video like done I was like yeah we're done here I'm willing to let it go I'm not gonna put a lining in it it's gonna be fine and then Lynn sends me an email and tells me like oh here's how you can handle it to make it better and easier and blah 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 and I was like thanks <laughs> I totally appreciate her help actually but um so now I'm gonna do some things to try to make this work cool beans um so at least I don't think I have to like cut down this circle that goes inside of here but I, I can still use it so that's good I'm not gonna waste the fabric um also I put these straps like way too far back I think they need to move forward like an entire strap like the back end of the strap should be where the front end is just right now so because it just it looks like a necklace on me instead of like a bonnet strap it's not a strap what is it called a tie anyway so but unfortunately to take <laughs> to take that off I have to effectively take off that ruffle too to some extent on both sides so I'm kind of bummed about that but we are practicing doing things right so I'm gonna practice doing this right. I'm gonna take it apart and do it again and I'm gonna attempt to put in a lining. If this lining fails, I'm just gonna call it and be like, it's good, it's fine without a lining. But um, I will try her method of doing a lining. Fun times. 
Um, I also did clean my entire craft room. Like I boned the floor, I vacuumed, I did the whole nine. I found all the pins that were everywhere and put them back where they went. I did all the things. So I'm excited about that. Um, did lit a fire under my butt though to like, I need to use up some fabric. Like I need to make things. <laughs> I need to like, I'm having this like existential problem between like I, my battery cam, my camera battery is flashing, damn it. Between I really like want to take my time and do things right and go slow and then also I just want to use up fabric so I get it out of the, the way so I can have everything in here and not have to like suck up space in the garage and stuff so it's a problem. I admit that. I don't really know what to do about it right now so I'm just quietly ignoring it currently. Okay so here's the solution she suggested. Um, since you don't want to have anything bunching up here, first of all, she said, like, maybe cut some of this down. Um, so I might make this a little bit cut down. And then, basically, I have a bias strip piece of silk, which is super thin, and I'm going to run that around here, and it's going to be up. And then I'm going to cut this circle down smaller, and at, like, the same width as what this is, minus a seam allowance, so really like an inch and a half, <clears throat> but an inch and a half all the way around of a radius is, you know, a lot. Then I'm going to attach the circle to this, and then I'm going to put, since this will be completely flat, there's no, like, crinkling to it, so it shouldn't add much width, then I'm going to put that whole thing in here and sew it. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, hopefully this explains it a little bit better. I did put this on my head to see if it would, my head would still fit, and it did, although it grabbed, my hair grabbed all this stuff these pins out <laughs> but yeah so then if you attach the this the linen up here then it can like deal with itself back in all this fluff so it just gives you a little bit of room okay so I put this in here and then I pleated it as nicely as I could and then I sewed it so let's find out if I did this entirely wrong or not, I should be able to pop this out and all of the, the seam allowances go the right way. Dear God, I hope so. I can't even put this in until I fix the straps though, so um, I'm also almost out of the yellow thread, so I'm not using it on this because... Do, 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 do. Yep, this is what will go inside the hat up in there so now i'm gonna stick this on my head and hopefully it will fit my hair so i'm gonna try that okay that does work yay okay so i'm gonna move the straps which is a pain in the butt and then i'm gonna put set those in and we're gonna hope hoping together all right we have ties moved to the correct places they have all been put down again um, feeling good. I'm now going to insert the lining, which I have flipped inside out. And now I flipped the lining inside out so that the nice parts are in, which is where my head goes. Um, and I'm going to pin this in and see how it goes. I don't know if I'm going to slip stitch it all tonight because it's getting kind of late, but I might. All right, we're looking good on the pinning. Everything fits well. I'm feeling solid. All I have to do is slip stitch this in and then we are gold. So I'm going to give it a start. We'll see how far I get. I'm kind of worried about when I get over here because it's really hard to like get a grip on this bonnet without like making it gross. So yeah. And we have a lining in. Woo woo! And it still fits on my head. And my hair can still fit in. So I'm super happy. We're calling this done! Woo -woo. I finished the bonnet! I finished the bonnet! Oh my gosh, you okay. guys. <laughs> this bonnet is um, the running joke of this channel at this point, and it's finally done. Alright, with that, I'm gonna go mark this off. Okay. Boop -doo -doo. And what that means is I can just erase all my compassionate goals. All right. <laughs> okay, with that, I'm going to call this vlog and I'm going to say that we're done here because I feel successful and I would like to end on a very successful note this week. 
So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys next time where we will set some new goals. Bye guys.